In this lesson, we'll spin up a three node cluster on our laptop. We'll start by starting three nodes, and then we'll initialize our cluster, and then grow it by adding more nodes. By the way, you can find similar instructions in our documentation by clicking through to start a local cluster. This wasn't written for Windows users, which can't use the minus minus background flag. Windows doesn't make it that easy to spawn a silent background process, so instead, we're gonna have each process in its own PowerShell window with one process per node in the cluster. And with that, let's do this. First, we go to PowerShell. Remember, we want Windows PowerShell, no ISE, no x86. Before we start, I'm gonna wanna have a few PowerShell windows open. I'll use the start PowerShell command to open them. I'll need five of them today. We'll use the cockroach start command to start a node. This command starts a node that's intended to join other nodes as part of a cluster. You're probably already familiar with some of these flags, but I'll look at a few of them that might be new. This join flag says where to find the other nodes when they come up. The store flag tells it to create a directory of my choice and put its data files and logs there. We'll be starting a few nodes and they'll each need their own directory. Great, let's start a second node. Huh, that failed and we got an error. Oh, I see, that address is already in use. We need to be careful not to let any nodes step on the toes of any others. Time to fix my mistake. I'll press up and change that seven to an eight in the listen address. That's better. Let's start our third node now. And it's up. When we're finished spinning up our initial set of nodes, which doesn't have to be three, we need to initialize our cluster. If we don't, we won't be able to talk to the cluster or see the admin UI. Let me show you. See, it's not showing me the prompt and it's going to error out momentarily. If this happens, make sure you've initialized and I'll use cockroach init to initialize the cluster. That worked. If I try to go to the SQL shell now, it'll work fine. We can see that the shell is working. Let's exit and check the cluster in the admin UI. There are our three nodes, up and healthy, Three is the minimum size for a production cluster. It's enough to maintain availability during node failure, but now that we've initialized the cluster, we can add more. I'll add two now. There's one. And there's the other. Those last two commands are just like the ones we used for the first three nodes they'll simply join the existing cluster. And here in the admin UI, we can see that our cluster now has five nodes. By now, the pattern should be clear. We can grow our cluster by adding more nodes with the same technique. And now we've spun up a cluster, initialized it, and grown it by adding additional nodes. 